Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing good and feeling great. Today, we are joined by a uh, elite player in the NFL right now, man. Dallas Cowboys. I'm from Texas myself, so I'm excited to be in here. Okay. Okay. Dallas great. Cowboy person here. Jordan Lewis, welcome to CV, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, Devin. Good to see you. Appreciate you. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. I appreciate you, man. Let me go ahead and uh, get into it. You, you know, you started your football journey uh, your, as a receiver, kind of when you first started and you made your way to the other side of the ball on the defensive end. Um, but that love for football is probably always there, no matter what position you're playing, just about being on the mm -hmm. field. How does that kind of like history earlier on kind of um, set you apart from some of the people that you played and have like that have had like your role in the, like, how does that extra expertise kind of help your role? Yeah, well, I've always been a DB, but I played um, offense a little bit. Um, I think it was my second year uh, with the Cowboys. But, I mean, just understanding what defense, what offenses want to do and how they want to attack defenses, it helps, a, like, a tremendous a lot. I mean, a tremendous bit when you can understand what, what they – how they want to attack different defenses and how they see it on their end. It can help you on a defensive end and, you know, get to jump on them and, uh, you know, try to execute better that way. So it, it definitely helps. I feel that. I feel that. Like, also, you're going to your eighth year in the mm -hmm. NFL, which is a blessing and amazing within itself. Mm -hmm. Testament to your hard work and your effect on the field. What has been like a big, or I'd say also say, what's been one of the most impactful things that like you've learned um, in that eight years? And that could be mm -hmm. from yourself, or it could just be the ability that you've like some things that you've learned from off the field, like learning your ability and learning things about who Jordan is. Like, what's yeah. the most imp impactful things? Um, it's just been honestly just going through the journey. It's been, you know, seeing what I can subtract from, you know, my routine or subtract from or sacrifice and what I could add that would benefit me. So anything that will benefit me, you know, I try to adapt it and anything that I feel like it's not, you know, I guess, um, it's gonna, you know, uh, make my, uh, my journey better or, you know, continue my journey. I, I kind of try to, you know, sacrifice or get out the way. So, Honestly, just finding the, the right ways to do things and, and getting that that routine, just making sure that you have a routine every day, because that's that's what breeds success. Understanding the routine and um, you know, sacrificing things that that get in the way of their routine. So once I found it, you know, that was like I feel like that was my key to success. Just finding that routine and and making sure that I don't deviate too much from it, and you know, finding good things to to put in that routine. For sure, for sure, dope. Um, you talk about routine, like. I love that you mentioned that, like routine, because I think one thing that's kind of underrated when it comes to the things that are so pivotal in people's lives and also just like the key to sometimes being great and like growth mm -hmm. is that routine. That routine is what builds like time management, consistency, yeah. things like that. So I love to even speak to like that routine piece. Now, um, also, you know, this is CV, so we're going to continue to activate towards our mission and help give back to the community and raise voices. So with that being said, we'll be donating 5,000 to the Jordan Lewis Foundation. Um, for those who don't know, Jordan, the Jordan Lewis Foundation is a nonprofit organization uh, providing youth with mentoring programs, opportunities to like access to uh, access opportunities. And, you know, really um, also just participation to amateur sports and youth and really just having an impact on the youth, giving back, mm -hmm. making sure that these kids are prepared for the future uh, mentally, physically, and just giving them that spirit to just continue going forward and things like that. Um, I would love to kind of know, you know, what made you, maybe I, I was, what made you start the foundation is like a very generic question. I want to say, what was kind of the passion or the purpose in, for yourself with starting this foundation? And can you kind of speak to, the ways that you kind of engage in the pouring into and having it pour back into you when it comes to your impact mm -hmm. on the community. Yeah, well, first off, I'd like to thank JD Sports, I mean, for the tremendous donation. That, that's that's going to help us a lot Um, because, you know, uh, we're trying to get our 7-on-7 seven seven team getting off the ground and stuff like that. So that's – thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And um, honestly, um, it's just rep representation because um, when I was younger, I didn't really have guys – in the league, we had NFL players in Detroit from the league in the league, but um, they never really came back and you know, like had a grassroots organization to where we can participate and we can learn from them and you know we can get just just nuggets of information to you know forward our you know our careers and um, I just wanted to be that person. I just wanted to be that person that I wanted when I was younger. So um, just starting my camp in two thousand. 
18 and, you know, trying to progress it and make it to where it's like it's a community thing to where we can, you know, change lives. We can give grants and stuff like that. We can make sure they go on college tours and th different things and um, just give them that exposure. And, you know, that, um, like you said, that connectivity to a guy that, you know, they look up to. Um, and that, that means all the world to me, you know, just being a person that I always wanted to be. Um, I felt like that was my inspiration of, you know, starting the Jordan Lewis Foundation. And, you know, we hopefully we can um, – we can progress it and uh JD Sports has helped us, you know, <laughs> you know, try to, you know, uh get it get it forward too. So uh, we definitely appreciate you guys and um we, we we our mission is, you know, uh is is just getting started. So I love that. And I, I wanna I ask this too, I think we talk about you think about all the kids that that you impact and have an effect on and what it means to their lives and we'll almost never truly know because mm -hmm. then you see those things as they go on. For you what has been one of your like most like proud moments or a moment that like yeah. it happened when you were with the foundation and you're just like, that's why I do it. That's yeah. why I do it. Um, it's just seeing all of the people that, you know, I feel like I've I've touched even before my uh my foundation I founded. Um I would train kids, you know, in high school. Some of my, you know, my D B coaches and um my defensive coordinators from high school, they had a program and I would just go out there and just, you know, just just give them game and and you know, just train with them even before that. Just just being around them and, and seeing their success, it, it it feels amazing, man. Just going out there and, you know, just being able to to and and, and see their success and, and know that I had a hand in it, 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 it means it means everything. Cause you know, a lot of people don't know that Sauce Gardner, he went to, he attended a few of my camps. So oh, Sauce God. Gardner, uh, guys like Nick Jones, he's with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, it just, it just feels good to see guys that, you know, I had a little, little bit of hand. I wouldn't say that, that I feel their success, but just being able to see those guys, you know, succeed and, and, and be a part of the foundation. It feels, it, it, it definitely fills my heart with joy. I love that. I love that. Is there anything up and coming or in the works that the foundation is going uh planning to do that maybe people should know about? Yeah. So uh we're we're starting our seven oh seven. Um it's Total Coverage Academy, our seven oh seven that um that my foundation um we fund and uh, we're just trying to get you know just teach people the, the the game of football teach the youth the game of football the right way and um just not you know go out there and you know seven oh seven is just put out the best athletes you go out there and run around no we want to we want to touch teach the fundamentals of football and you know which is you know the fundamentals of life um and that's the game that we love and um that's what I, why i fell in love with it because it made me a better man so you know just just developing their, them as football players and, and as you know as young men um you know that's what we're our our key um i feel like um focus is right now so. i love that i love that and i love that you spoke to the to the growth of like what something that you love wasn't just like a passion or a hobby, but it was a way that you grew as a man, like grew into mm -hmm. yourself, found yourself and was able to kind of learn those key things early through your passion. So I, I love that. I love that. I love that piece. Um, I want to ask you one more thing before we kind of get ready to wrap things up. I think if as somebody who, who, who knows your career, it's one of a lot of resilience, fight, strength. I mean, it's not easy. I think people underestimate how hard it is to stay in the NFL, to stay in the position, to stay coming back, trying to do more and more every year, to 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 have an impact on a team with so many moving parts and pieces in order to be successful. And like I think you've just just shown those three things, the resilience and the fight and all those things. I think even after I think uh, a certain point in time where you, you won uh, the award was called uh, the. Ed Block Award, yeah. Ed Block, yes, Courage Award, right? And I think that even that just speaks to like who you are and your growth, um, mm -hmm. and just like your longevity. How how does that? I want to say one. How did that reward feel to you when you received it? And also, when you when you when you think about those kind of things, how does it? How do you reflect on that time and your growth as a player over the years? Because I can only imagine every year you go into it. Of course, like the goal is the same, right? Like to get to the mm -hmm. Super Bowl, get through the playoffs. But then you also have to deal with the internal growth of like, how do I want to be better? How do I want to mm -hmm. show up? What am I going to get better mm -hmm. at on the field? Or how am I going to reach out to this person to help? You know what I mean? Like there's all those things. Exactly. How does that kind of work? 
Yeah, well, I mean, first, um, it, it felt good to win the Ed Block Curse Award because you know everybody votes for it, your teammates and the staff on the um with the Cowboys, and um, it felt good that they recognized my hard work and they recognized the product that I put on the field and they appreciated it. So, I mean, that meant the world to me because you know that the injury I came back from was you know you know I could have ended my career, so it, it meant it meant all the world to me to be acknowledged, uh, you know, from my you know my organization, and um, just you know, honestly. To, what, what makes me, what keeps me going, and keeps me motivated to, you know, to go for that Super Bowl, to go to have a, a, a successful career, is you know my faith, my faith in the Lord. Um, and you know you have to have faith that you know you can you can continue to do what you need to do, and you can do it at a a, a better level that you did the next year. And um, at some point, you know, it got to be faith. It has to be faith and delusion. So you have to, you know, go against what people, you know, are saying about you or your team or anything like that. And you just have to defy that. And you just have to go out there and just believe in yourself to the ump degree that people think that you're crazy, honestly. And it has to be like that. I mean, if you want to succeed in anything, like your goals have to be so crazy that the average person can't even fathom it. So you have to understand that my goals are that and you have to, you have to work towards that and you can't sacrifice. You can't deviate from those plans. You can't deviate from those goals and you just got to go out there and put in the work, honestly. So it's just seeing a goal, being a vision, a visionary and um, um, just understanding that, you know, it, it's going to be work. So you go out there, you see the vision, just go out there and, and keep working every day towards that goal. So I feel like, Every year, that's what we do. Every year, that's what I do. I see a new challenge. I go for it, and um, that's what keeps me going, honestly. You know, in this conversation, I think you gave the three key things to life in, in, in this 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is. I think you spoke to habits, which speaks to consistency, faith, which speaks to belief, and the last – how am I forget? I'm so – my mind's so crazy. I forgot third thing while I was saying it. But – the things that you, those to me, the three things, even I didn't say the third thing, the three, those three things are like so impactful because you, they don't work without the other. Like even like in the, in the vision, the, the vision of something so like, sometimes you have to see yourself higher than anybody will see it. And everybody's not going to always agree with you or think you can even do it. But it's also because everybody doesn't have the faith that you have mm -hmm. that you know what can happen in your life. So you know that you can be that person. And so, like I said, those those three things, the, the, the vision, the habits, and like the faith, those are like literally like you just spoke to like the keys of success. And those, that's what it takes to, to, to all three of those together make make you, you know what I'm saying, grow and do those things. So, man, I say that to say you have a, a, a you're blessed. You have an amazing career ahead of you because those three things are the ways that you just continue to grow and to continue to be great and continue to do things that people were like, how does he do that? How is he still... Mm -hmm. and they'll never they'll never truly understand it because you gotta exactly have years of, of of those things of that faith of that those habits of that consistency of that vision that you worked hard for so i appreciate you even taking time to do this but i appreciate you taking time to speak to those key things in life man that's that's a lot yeah, i appreciate it i appreciate the time and I, like you said man you you have to you have to be a visionary to see it. You have to be a visionary. You have to be a visionary to, to inspire people. You have to, like you said, I mean, that's those three things. Those are the key of life. And I, I just try to live like that every day. I mean, life is really simple. I mean, it's not easy, but it's simple. It's, it's definitely simple. Uh, you just got to do the key things and you got to work at it. So that's that's what I, I, I hang my hat on, man. And uh, hopefully I can keep inspiring and, and keep doing what I'm doing for the community. I'm not even going to say any more on that. I'm not going to step on that. I think that's the perfect way to end this episode, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching another episode of Community Voices. And until next time, take care, y'all.